And, so, so and I would like to ask, uh, you know, as, as the nice. public becomes more aware of this wasteful uh, use of uh, water, can, can, can that be corrected? What would be the things that could change and correct that problem? I can't. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not an irrigation expert. Uh, so part of me wonders if it's about crop selection or if it's actually deliberate waste uh, on the part of, of certain farm <laughs> My uh, just looking at some of the crop patterns, I think crop selection is a bigger problem with the almonds and the alfalfa. Uh, being so prominent in pistachios in recent years, but I, I don't know. You guys want to tackle if, if it's... In some of this is a better way. way. You, 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 you whisper a comment at the start about rice. Rice! Oh, rice! Oh, yeah. 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 There's about a thousand square miles of rice grown in the Sacramento Valley, and that all used to be wetland habitat. And that 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 those rice fields are tremendously important stopping points for migratory water waterbirds. Without rice in the Sacramento Valley, the food fly away would really suffer. Um, now, does that mean some food grows less rice? Well, that's because you're saying that they pay for the guys if they didn't flood irrigate them. They would. Frankly. Well, but, uh, that's but, what they're it, doing. but rice is rice is flood irrigated. That's how that crop right. is grown. You can't drip irrigate yeah. rice. So um, the thing about wetlands is they need standing water on them. That's what makes a wetland a wetland. So in, so so that's a, that's a case where I look at flood irrigation. Get <coughs> rid of all rice in California now because there it's tremendously important. Well, uh, what would be the environmental uh, quality standard if you flood irrigate? Uh, uh, rice and uh, and they, they try to keep the rice healthy by uh, putting pesticides and herbicides on it to keep it healthy. I mean, what well, is the do. downside yeah. of doing? And they do. They do. Yeah, and they do. So, you know, so I, I wouldn't say it's a, you know, it's a, a win-win situation. Well, pesticide regulation is just a can of worms. I spend most of my time working on nitrate contamination because you're worried about a few million, a few million tons, maybe 10 million tons of fertilizers. Of, of pesticides, but I worry about um, fertilizer because a crop uses anywhere from 50 to 800 pounds of fertilizer for every acre. And if you've got the right kind of soil, a lot the nitrate, you know, farmers put on it as much as they need for the crop and then a little more because it's not that expensive. That little more can off gas as a very toxic um, greenhouse gas or it can leach into the groundwater. and you have extremely toxic groundwater in agricultural areas of the state, particularly Tulare Lake Basin and Salinas Valley. And I know communities whose <coughs> water is has six times the health level of nitrate. That is toxic. Um, you can't drink that water. And so I, when I think about crop selection, I think about what I've been working on for more than a decade, which is trying to figure out how to reduce agricultural's, agriculture's impact on groundwater. And pesticides are really important, but we have to get a handle on fertilizer use as well. And that, and that also has to do with irrigation, because when and how you fertilize and when and how you water, they're all part and parcel of how you manage your crop and how you reduce impacts. And if you, you, you mentioned over applying, uh, over applying. Um, about 50%, it's usually about 50 over applying nitrogen, a lot of farmers turn water sheep also over apply water. Yeah. But those two things together, you're putting too much nitrogen on your land, and then you're too much, putting too much water on your land. That's how you pollute your ground. On the other hand, the number one source of groundwater recharge in the Central Valley is irrigation. <clears throat> so if you start using drip irrigation, it's going to be harder to recharge your groundwater. Well, you know, there's some bad that goes with that. So. Oh, sure. You know, I, 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 oh, no, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm working on this very closely, and it's not easy. I, I, I heard your farmer actually say something really bad <coughs> recently. And he said flood irrigation is a good thing in wet years. The problem is if you flood irrigate in all years, you're yeah. wasting that water in, in dry years. What he said is that what he said he has done is he's converted his farm to drip irrigation, but he left his flood irrigation infrastructure there. So when it's really wet, 
can take down water and flood his fields and recharge his ground water. Yeah. But there when it's dry, it's a perfect guy. Yeah, we're going to go with the gentleman in the peach shirt and Joni, and then we're going to give it several minutes to Bernie, who's been gracious. <laughs> uh, one brief question. Uh, does anybody have any information on what happened to Kesterson? I remember like 35, 40 years ago, <laughs> Kesterson was kind of a, a dead area. And um, so does anybody have an update on what we've learned from uh, that? Um, yeah, Kester, Kesterson was, was shut down 20 oh, plus years ago. Um, and just a little background. Adam mentioned the tremendously high mineral contract, not just salt, but other minerals and soils on the west side of the valley. Um, and, and in order to farm that land, in order to try to farm that land, you've got to get that salt out of that land. So what they what they did was was uh, was flood, was irrigate early in the season, late in the winter, early in the spring, and and get salt out of those fields, including including selenium, which in high concentrations is extremely toxic. And the original idea was they were going to pump all of that water into San Francisco Bay. No, thank you. Um, what happened was they only built half the drain, and they built the drain to an area, and they just dumped the water, and it became a wildlife refuge because that's where they put their drainage water. And the ducks didn't see the selenium; they saw ponds, and uh, the selenium accumulated in those ponds became nightmarishly toxic, and that was shut down. And we have a really messy system for managing that drainage water now. Some of it still goes in the San Joaquin River, and we still have a stimulant problem. In some places, we have little mini kestersons, little ponds. Um, um, there are some farmers looking doing some creative stuff. Um, one, of the, one of the new techniques that has been attempted in the Central Valley is solar power desalination, yeah. where you use parabolic mirrors, you run that drainage water <coughs> through, uh, through the, the trough, those parabolic mirrors, uh, heat it up, and you desalinate that uh, that toxic drain water so you can use that water again. Um, but the, the, the settlement that Adam talked about earlier is really driven by um, uh, by the, 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 the drainage problem. The, 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 there's been litigation for decades over drainage um, I, that I refuse to participate in. But, um, um, but it's been a long, nasty problem. The settlement that Adam mentions, um, um, unfortunately, doesn't offer any added land retirement um, and leaves real questions about whether those farmers, if they take over the drainage management responsibility from the feds, are really going to responsibly manage that, that drainage problem. Well, the Central Valley is required to have a salt management plan by next year, and I've been sitting on that committee for seven years now. I don't yeah. think they're going to do that. Tick-tock. <laughs> At least the boondoggle central station solar projects that don't work to produce electricity <laughs> might work to produce civilization. What a silver lining. Jody? Oh, yeah. I just had um, two questions. Um, when, okay, so the public trust document, we own the water and it belongs to everyone. Isn't San Francisco going against the public trust doctrine to be throwing our water into the bay? Wastewater? I think that would be waste and unreasonable use. I think that would be violating the state constitution. Right. So the, Article two. The, the state constitution has, has and as Jennifer, as Jennifer mentioned, prohibits wasteful and unreasonable use of water. So the state water board has tremendous authority. And the state water board could look at, at farmers and say, you know, you're not reporting your water use. Um, if you keep doing that, you're jeopardizing your water rights. The state board has tremendous authority. So who has authority over them? them? That, and the governor. Them. No, but the gov which governor is appointed? The five of them. The governor appointed them. Some yes. governors, several governors. Jerry Brown. And this, is this it governor. for life? Is it for how no, no, four years. years. Or oh, just no. for the time of that governor? No, four years, and then and then he reappoints them if he chooses to. Or the next governor does. So the yes. water board members get a four-year term. They have to be confirmed by the Senate. Um, and it's don't forget that the state water board regulates everybody. They regulate. Uh, public water systems, they regulate farmers, they regulate forests, they regulate stormwater, they regulate wastewater. They are the uber regulator of the state. <laughs> and that means that every agency in the state hates them and they're on a bullseye. So before you add, I mean, a couple of years ago, I moved the drinking water, I, I worked with folks to move the drinking water program from the Department of Public Health to the water board. And it was a huge issue because everyone said, the water board has too much power. So it's one thing having all that power, but exercising it could kind of boomerang 